of the NFL Stock Exchange Podcast. I'm Trevor Sikama. That is Connor Rogers. Joining you guys on a beautiful Monday morning edition of the pod with week one action in the books. I guess not totally in the books. We still got Monday Night Football. We still got the Seattle Seahawks triumphant defeat over Russell Wilson. What, what, wait, did I say that? Did I say that? Are you picking the Broncos? Are you picking the Seahawks? Which way are you going on that one, Connor? I am leaning Denver, um, but my goodness, and we're going to get into all this today, did a lot of dogs either upset tie cover it, week one week one's the worst trevor i said it when we did the thursday predictions week one's the worst and it continues to be the worst but in a way it's also the best dude we're getting into all of it there are so many yeah. you're right. it is the best it is the worst we're gonna tell you what mattered most from every single game that uh that happened during the sunday slate which could really mean anything what mattered most could be a player performance whether they did bad whether they did good it could be the overall result it could yep. be how even the losing team, if they played well, maybe that's what mattered most is that they actually were competent and, and maybe it was a team that won and barely won. So what mattered most is that they should have actually won by a lot more. We're kind of opening this up all the way to make sure that we give you guys what we think the biggest storyline, the most meaningful result from every single game uh, in the NFL. Connor, do you want to start with the Jets? I feel like we should start with the Jets. It's been my whole day, so I guess uh, I know this. You're already warm. This, that's why I want to do it. Yeah, you're already warm. yeah. Let's the, let's let's the get that one done. Warm. The arm's already warm. It's already stretched up. So yeah, that's let's get that one done. Uh, so I, I mean, we're starting with the Jets, but my takeaway from this game is about Baltimore and the man that uh, did not reach a contract extension with the Ravens with you know the Lamar Jackson negotiations reportedly. And I know after the game, he said that this wasn't true. But it was reported that he turned down 133 guaranteed million dollars, as he should. I, I really respect Lamar that he's going for this, that he's looking at the Deshaun Watson deal and going, how the hell is that guy getting that deal compared to what I've done? Won an MVP. We win every year here. Last year they were hurt, so you take that year out. And you know what? The first half, the Jets' defense played really, really well and really didn't give the Ravens much of anything. But Lamar... I put it like this on the post game show. It's that hourglass that's emptying out. You can only contain the guy for so long before he's going to be able to make a play, whether it's with his legs, throwing the ball down the field. I look at Baltimore and I like a lot of what they've done as always for years, but man, Trevor Lamar is the heart and soul and the identity of that freaking football team. And you do anything anything to keep him there because Lamar ja the Ravens are no longer the 2000 Ravens where they have good defense right they have a really good defense I get it but the offensive line is down to their third string left tackle after Juwan James uh had a season ending injury today Lamar Jackson gets them out of all of the bad spots they are put in because of injuries or lack of stars here or lack of stars there or play calling and that's just uh, my story is something that they should have got this done this summer and done whatever it took to get it done. And it, it will ultimately get done. I think it will too. Um, Lamar certainly calling a shot. He knows he's one of the best talents in the NFL and he knows that as long as he's healthy, that contract is going to come. I I'm going to, he has be, no fear, no fear. I'm going to be holding my breath all season. Yeah, me too. Because I just, I don't want him to get hurt. Right. I, that's, yeah. that's, that's what I'm going to be holding my breath about. And, um, you know, this game, I thought that what was brilliant from Jackson was that he had to listen to people all offseason say, oh, the reason why he's not getting the contract that he wants is because he's one-dimensional. You know, he can't be a passer. Lamar had 17 rushing yards today. Lamar had 200 passing yards, an adjusted completion percentage of 75%. People might look at the uh, completion percentage and go, oh, 17 for 30, that's not very good. That's barely about 50%. If you go to the adjusted completion percentage, stat that we have at PFF, which takes into account uh, passes that should have been caught for drops. It goes all the way up to 75%. This dude was absolutely accurate. He was yeah, dead. a lot of drops. Three touchdowns, only one interception. I believe he had two big-time throws and one turnover-worthy play there. But uh, Lamar was absolutely fantastic. Uh, the story of this one's not that the Jets lost. Final score was 24-9. to um, Got to remember to say the final score at the beginning. I totally forgot. But, you know, the Jets, they don't have Zach Wilson, right? And And – it's i guess you're never really going to get a what matters most about the jets until zach wilson plays i fully agree say. they okay. couldn't do anything with flacco back there yeah yeah also dude rashad bateman that touchdown was sick a lot of people have been waiting a long time yes. for this dude to arrive and that bomb of a touchdown I, he only had two catches for 59 yards and yeah. a big chunk of them came on that touchdown but uh whoo 
That was a beauty for everybody who's been waiting a long time for that. Yeah, you could see the emotions on their sidelines. Like, okay, like we've been waiting for this one from this guy. Duvernay had a really good game, but you know, once again, Lamar made things happen. And um, I've talked so much about the Jets today that you know, all right, I, we'll move on. We're, it's it's that I, I wanted to do a Ravens takeaway for that game. If you if you had a take, obviously you brought up Bateman. Uh, I would I would hear it, but you know. Yeah, their they're, they're three first-rounders played well, and they had a lot of problems besides that. Yeah, I mean, the what matters most with the Ravens is, is simply, you know, the, the James injury, it's not great, man. I mean, this was already a team that was beat up a lot last year. Yeah, they need year. Ronnie to get to ramp up. They do. They really do because, yeah, this team had a lot of injuries last year. You're not really starting off on the right foot when you're starting off at the tackle, gets hurt. Um, the storyline is that the Ravens took care of business as usual and that Lamar looked like an absolute stud in this game. So there's not a big takeaway for me. It wasn't going to be a big takeaway from the Jets. Uh, it was all about the Ravens. The Ravens needed to take care of business. And, 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 and I really think that they did. Uh, next game that I want to touch on, this is one that I'm not going to lie to you. I had the New Orleans Saints covering five and a half as it's my, my lock. lock of <laughs> the week, dude. It was my lock. And we have... The Saints barely beating the Atlanta Falcons at home by a score of 27 well, to 26. What? The, what Falcons, kind of- the Falcons blew this game. Like, there was no, like, oh, the Saints barely won. Like, they held on. Like, the, the Saints had no business winning this game with how it went for three quarters. I mean. They scored 17 fourth quarter points. Hey, listen. If I've yeah. said it once, I've said it a million times. Jameis Winston. Most entertaining ticket in sports. Every single kidding. week, baby. Jameis does it. Uh, they, they, the Saints go to Atlanta and they win by uh, they win by a point here. Uh, Jameis threw for 269 yards, had two touchdowns, no interceptions. Uh, Taysom Hill had that massive 57 yard run, just which hilarious. is brought this his is a hilarious total game. on the game to 81 yards, which is uh, truly amazing. Uh, Drake London, actually the uh, first round rookie. Led the Atlanta Falcons with five receptions, 74 yards. Corey o. Patterson also went off in this game. Connor, what was your big takeaway? What mattered most from New Orleans Saints, Atlanta Falcons this week? Uh, to me, it was that when they really, really needed something from Jameis in the second half, they, they can push him, right? They could push him to get it done for them. And I know that they... They had a really rough start to this game. I don't think they expected to come out at, you know, at halftime and be losing 16 to 7 to a Falcons team that under Marcus Mariota is, you know what they are. They're not pushing the ball down the field. Um Cordero Patterson, awesome awesome game, but I'm keeping the Saints related because they won. For me it was that this offense I think is going to get in a groove and they can ask more of him as the season goes on where when you've looked at this offense in recent years especially after Jameis got hurt last year, they've been hamstrung where they've had to ask so much of their defense over and over. And I know Jameis wasn't perfect today, but when they needed him most and when they needed this offense the most, they were able to squeak out a sneaky, a scary, scary win. And I think that's going to be the theme of the Saints this year as far as they go is how far can Jameis take them? Because this is going to be a good defense. They have enough playmakers on offense. But what is the situation at quarterback? Yeah, what mattered most for me, and I, I definitely agree, it all starts and ends with Jameis, right? He's got to play well in order for the rest of this to matter. But honestly, my biggest what mattered most here for the Saints was their wide receiver room because Jarvis Landry was exactly what you wanted him to be. Led the team in receptions with seven, had over 100 yards, had 114. Um, led the team in first down catches like that's what you want that's why Jarvis yep. Landry was brought onto the team absolutely so Chris Olave looked comfortable enough to where Jameis went to him for the two-point conversion which is very critical in the game but what was most important about what was most important Michael Thomas dude ended the game five receptions 57 yards and two touchdowns both of those touchdowns were beauties by yeah. Michael Thomas on AJ Terrell like he didn't Crazy, do this right? against anybody like Michael Thomas went big on big, best on best against the one of the very few things that the Atlanta Falcons had to boast. Yep. And they went straight after that best player and Michael Thomas delivered. It's been a long time coming for Michael Thomas to get back to that point. And if you are somebody who believes in the New Orleans Saints at all whatsoever, you wanted to see this from their receiver group. You wanted to see this from Jameis. You needed to see this, especially from a 
former number one go-to at all times player in Michael Thomas. That was such an important part of this game for me. And even beyond the score, even beyond the Saints win, because it was ugly, right? I mean, like, I feel like the Saints in the trenches d- did not do what they needed to do. They were not as stout as we thought they were going to be. No. But this offense delivered, and there's going to be times throughout this season where they're going to need that. And uh, Michael Thomas was the thing that mattered the most to me, absolutely. Okay. Um, moving. Did we want to – I didn't want to miss this. Did we want to do Buffalo, L.A. from Thursday night? Uh, I feel like we – Or does it feel we, so far away? No, no the last time we did the show right. was pregame. You're right. We didn't talk about it. Okay, so let's do it. Let's do Buffalo and, uh, and the Los Angeles Rams. Buffalo obviously absolutely destroys the Los Angeles Rams by a score of yep. 31 to 10. Um, Josh Allen looked phenomenal. Matthew Stafford, not so much. What mattered most in this game, Connor? I'm very curious. These are two teams with playoff yep. aspirations, obviously the reigning Super Bowl champion and the current Super Bowl favorite. So which, which result mattered the most to you? The Rams, all the way. Uh, listen, I, I know Josh Allen and the Bills are going to be a freight train this year. I know the Allen to Diggs connection is just total dynamite. Gabe Davis should score plenty of touchdowns. The Bills are really good. I'm not su- I, They're awesome. The Rams, Trevor, looked bad in this game. And it's not Super Bowl hangover bad. It's not a couple sloppy plays. It's that I don't think their offensive line can block. I think they have yeah. a quarterback back there that... It's just been going through a lot of stuff. And he, thank God he won a Super Bowl last year. But it feels like Stafford's body, there's there's just been a lot of stuff he's been going through. The motion was a little weird at times. They are really going to lean on Cooper Cup. Allen Robinson ran a million routes and just they couldn't get him the ball. Their run game is very strange. The Cam Maker situation has to be hitting the panic button a little bit coming off the Achilles. I just, I just thought, Trevor, the Rams did not look good. I think Andrew Whitworth moving on to retirement was a huge blow for the continuity and the veteran leadership of the offensive line. And, and it just had me hitting the panic button on Super Bowl hangover for them all year. Yeah, there's, there's a couple of things that I, I want to touch on with the Bills because I, I don't, wanna, I don't for, want for both of us to not recognize how, uh, what, how good they look. Right, how incredible it looked. Yeah. But, you're right. The thing that mattered most is how bad the Rams looked. And for Not me, good. the a, a micro part, a detailed part of how bad they looked was even outside of Stafford's arm, he trusted no one outside of Cooper Cup. Nobody. No. Allen Robinson had one catch he throw him the ball. 12 yards on 48 offensive snaps. He wouldn't even throw him the ball. And no. so, like, that's the biggest issue for me is that – You know, last year, the Rams, especially down the stretch, getting to the Super Bowl, they they had Odell, right? Maybe Odell wasn't the New York Giants Odell that we had seen in previous years, but, like, at least Matthew Stafford was going to this dude. Yep. felt like Tyler Higby was a lot more productive. Oh, without a doubt. You could see it. You know, and it's just Cooper Cup was always going to lead this team in targets. Always. That was never going to change. But when the going got tough, Stafford wouldn't throw to anybody else. He just wouldn't throw to anybody else. And that's not going to fly. It's just not, you have to have more offensive weapons than that. The Los Angeles Rams have to get it figured out. The offensive line is a major issue, major issue. And that definitely is what matters most as well. But certainly want to shout out the Buffalo bills. We, we expected them to come in. Look, I, I picked them to, to cover the the two point spread. I I thought that that was going to be easy money because I trusted Buffalo a lot more than I trusted the Rams. Um, The defense looked great. Um, they've got another corner, that sixth round corner. Who, who is the Villanova? Who's, the, yeah, the Villanova dude. And I mean, he's he he beat out Kyrie. Beat out Kyrie Elam. Like he beat out Kyrie Elam to start. So for us to look at a super deep Buffalo Bills secondary and defense overall, and for them to play that well, I'll Wait tell till you Trey too, White's back. I I know, <laughs> but I and I'll tell you now that I'm saying this out loud, I'll tell you what maybe mattered the most from the Buffalo Bills how much pressure they got with four yeah. defensive linemen. Yeah. They did not blitz one time. They didn't blitz once. They stuck with the modern day script and that we're not going to blitz. We're going to keep people in coverage. We're going to make it difficult for you to find soft spots in the zone. We're going to make it for you difficult for you to find space. And we're going to attack with our front four guys. And whether it was Boogie Basham, whether it was Greg Rousseau, whether it was Ed Oliver, who's kind of in and out of the lineup, whether it was Jordan Phillips, who had the highest PFF passing grade he's ever had in a single game. Who was that version of Jordan Phillips? Even Bills fans are like, this is not the guy that we used to have. Dude, he was going off, man. Crazy. He was going Crazy. off. No matter who it was on the defensive line, 
they were getting pressure with four. And if you, if this Bills team can get pressure with four. Good luck, NFL. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough sudden for the rest of you. Justin Fields gets a dub, all right? After yes. all the talking that we did this offseason about how bad the Bears are going to be, how terrible this team's going to be, how they're not going to win more than two or three games this year. They take down the San Francisco 49ers. They defend home turf. And by home turf, I should probably say home pond, home sea. You're not going to like my my reaction for this one. Because this game was in a torrential downpour. Trey Lance, a little shaky. A little yeah. shaky there. So what's the biggest takeaway? What mattered most from uh, the Bears taking down the Niners 19 to 10? This is my game of the week that lied. And I know I'm doubling down and I'm salty because the Niners didn't even forget covering the spread. They didn't win. And it's nothing against Justin Fields, who I love. I, I thought he makes the most of just a not great situation for him at all. And, he, you know, it took a while to get going. He had a really rough start to the game because they, they just don't pass protect for him. And there's not a lot of weapons out there. Trevor, this to me will be our week one game that we look back at and go, how the hell did that happen? And the answer is probably there. Quarterback that's barely played much football in the last couple years torrential downpour horrible conditions and the Niners just looked like a team that this was their fourth preseason game right for me and credit to the Bears the Bears got an upset win they did some really nice things but I look at this and go man I'm not hitting the panic alarm on the Niners at all on this I still think in a normal weather conditions they have an excellent front four yeah they I, I do wonder if this is happening in October like consistently mm -hmm. did you, they bring jimmy g back for a reason i the, mean brother listen the thing that mattered most for me about this game is that it is a bad trey lance game and you could sit here look I, I i can already see it now people in the comments are gonna be like look it was a it was a torrential downpour oh, yeah. game you know just throw it out it doesn't even matter for trey lance unfortunately it does it does yeah because does. jimmy garoppolo is still on the team and when this happened, and you and I, you and I talked about this on this podcast, you could sit here and say all you want that this is Trey Lance's team. You could say Jimmy Garoppolo at the beginning of the year could say, "Yeah, it's Trey Lance's team. I'm, I'm just trying to be the best team I can, help him out, whatever." You can, you can say whatever words you want. I've covered a team that has been in this. Do we have two quarterbacks? None. One. What do we have? When it was Jameis Winston and Ryan Fitzpatrick. It is a roller coaster and it can be mentally hell for a head coach because if Trey Lance, who did not now start, he, who obviously did not start the year out well, has a couple more bad games, like you said, like if we creep into October, yep. this is a defense that is playoff caliber. This is a team that was one dropped interception away from maybe going to the Super Bowl with Jimmy as their quarterback. You start losing too many games here. You start not being able to move the ball a little bit. Those whispers start to turn into commands of we got to get Jimmy G in here or this season's going to be done. So it's a lifeline. Is that what it is, is. That's, that's my thing. The result for the Niners to me doesn't matter. I still think they're the best team in that division. I still think they can get it figured out. And I'm not even pressing the panic button necessarily on Trey Lance. But what matters most is that to me is that he played bad because this opens the door for Lance and the conversations to begin or start or at least not die that Jimmy might play at some point this season. So that's my, uh, that's my, what mattered most. Yeah, it does. It, it absolutely does. I, I just, everybody's got their eye on it and it's yep. gotta be a not so great feeling for Trey Lance. Uh, right what, now. what mattered most Philadelphia Eagles 38 Detroit lions 35. We got Dan Campbell cover in the spread. Once again, you love to see it. What mattered the most from this high scoring affair, Connor, that the AJ Brown acquisition was just total firecracker. <laughs> it what mattered most to me is the Eagles have something that they have not had in quite some time. a, target monster volume machine that can win at every level of the field that can be Jalen Hurts. I like Devonte Smith, right? Nothing against Devonte Smith at all. They needed a alpha male, just true number one in the mold of AJ Brown. And they got it for a really good price. And you see the rewards right away, Trevor. I mean, the guy went over a hundred yards in the first half. It just allows the Eagles to, 
be a balanced football team. I know the Eagles can run, and they can run in a lot of different ways. They have a couple running backs. Kenny Gainwell got involved in this game, which was awesome. Jalen Hurts is obviously a very good runner. Yeah. They, they have multiple weapons in the past game. But when you have an alpha male that, defense, that uh, defensive coordinators have to send extra attention to, it helps everyone else. And if they don't, that guy eats you alive. Philadelphia Eagles are very scary. You know, I, I when I did my season prediction, I said that the Eagles were, I, I went through the Eagles schedule and I had them coming out at 13 and four. And I thought that that was absolutely crazy. But this team- Not even crazy at all. This team's really good. And their schedule is really easy. And if they're coming out of the gate on fire like this, now, okay, I say on fire, it was a three-point game. The Lions clawed their way back, but they scored 14 of those points in the fourth quarter. It felt like this was all Eagles all the way. So- I still think that they were really in control. Now they've got to be able to master when they have a lead, be able to defend it a little bit better. But you know, the, the AJ Brown actual acquisition, the James Bradbury acquisition, which I think was Great huge call. for them, right? He Great got an call. interception. He had a big game. That bad boy for a touchdown. I mean, you, you had Jordan Davis pushing the pocket on guys, defending the run, being an absolute force against They're a pretty complete team against a really good Detroit lions offensive line. Like I, I just, I, I do feel like the, the the Eagles really made a statement this week. And with an easy schedule, they certainly said, hey, we can conquer this thing and um, and we can win that division. I don't know if this mattered most, but I want to give a shout out to Jeff Akuda, who played really well against Devontae Smith. Devontae Smith at one point in the game. No, shoot. I, I didn't even realize this. He didn't even have a catch. I looked in the I looked in the third quarter. He had four targets, zero catches, zero yards. And I'm like, what in the world is happening with Devontae Smith? Yep. And then I was going back and I was big old goose egg. Asking fantasy. some people who were who cover the team and who cover the Lions. And uh they were like, dude, Jeff Akuda's locked him down a little bit here. So Jeff Akuda uh, was targeting six times in coverage, not only on Devontae Smith, it's just for the whole game. Six times, gave up four catches, just on but just 32 yards, had the highest coverage grade of any player on the Lions according to PFF's initial grades so huge for Jeff Akuda. now I don't think that, I don't think that that's the thing that mattered most I still, still think the thing that mattered most I like the um, how big the or how dominant the Eagles were but like the honorable the mentions of what mattered most. yeah you know what it's our show we can do whatever the hell we want yeah it doesn't matter we we make the rules that's the right. best part of having a podcast right 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 also, if you don't like it you could start one from your own home that's the great the beauty of podcasting <laughs> <laughs> also uh J- Jared Goff it might be bad enough for this Lions team to be in QB range next year in the NFL draft, but might be good enough oh, where no. like we still like the Lions. Like we still like Dan Campbell. Like we're not about to run hey, Dan Campbell out of town. I, I think going to Detroit's gonna be uh is gonna be no, you know, walk in the park for teams this year. I agree. I agree. So I, I, I do agree. like your your golf take though. Just bad enough that Just hey bad team enough. quarterback class. You can get your starter with the fourteenth or twelfth overall pick. You got to stay in range. You got to stay in range. All right. Where are we going we, next, Trev? Well, before we get to our next one, got to tell people that uh, NFL's opening week was action packed and it's only just the beginning. Get ready for week two's touchdowns, big plays, and even bigger wins with DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of the NFL. This week, new customers can bet just $5 on any football game and get themselves $200 in free bets instantly. You want more action? Now everyone can experience the thrill of DraftKings early win promotion. It's pretty simple. This Sunday, you bet on any NFL team, and if your team leads by 10 at any point in the game, so we're going double digits now, you get paid instantly. Even if the team loses at the end of the game, they go up by 10, you get paid. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use the promo code PFF to get $200 free dollars in bets instantly when you place a $5 bet on any football game. That's PFF, only DraftKings Sportsbook, an official betting partner of the NFL Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See description for details. And if you're doing so, if you're going to bet on DraftKings, download the PFF app as well because we have a tab on the PFF app that just has PFF Greenline right there. And it will tell you exactly what PFF simulations think about certain lines, over-unders, and it'll tell you, like, yeah, this is juicy. We think this is really going over. Or uh, we think this team's going to cover uh, we've also got player props on there. So check it out. Download the PFF app. If you got an Apple device, you get the fantasy football advice as well. You get the betting dashboard. You get uh, all the draft football analysis as well, right in the palm of your hand. PFF app is free to download. Uh, when you sign up, leave us a five-star review. And if you give us your 2022 Super Bowl prediction, 
might share some best ones on the show. So you might get a shout out on the show as well. So go check it out, PFF's app. Next game that we're going for. My computer reload here. Oh, what a what a beauty, Connor. Are you going Commanders Jaguars? No, I wasn't, but oh, we can't. Okay. We, go, we go straight oh, wait, there. Wait, 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 wait. Are you going with the tie? No, no, it's going to the game that almost was a tie. Almost. Oh, this game was awesome. <laughs> Steelers Bengals. What an absolute slugfest of two teams that couldn't try to lose harder, baby. Neither of these teams wanted to win the game. 23 to 20. Steelers end up being victorious as the clock strikes zero in overtime. Connor, this one was wild. It obviously had divisional implications. The The statistics were just all over the damn place. So you tell me what mattered most about Steelers Bengals that this the Steelers defense is vintage it matters so much how vintage they are but I want to go deeper than that and say how did they get Minka Fitzpatrick right and I know at the time the trade was looked at and it was like man that's a lot for a guy that hasn't been a star yet and like all Minka Fitzpatrick in this game Trevor played 100 snaps 100 in this game And he was just incredible. And specifically, I thought incredible in coverage. He changes the game. He makes big plays. He makes the big plays, but he also makes the little plays that you only see on the coach's tape where the ball didn't go. And what did, honestly, Joe Burrow having a bad game didn't matter to me. Like, I know Joe Burrow's really good. I know the Bengals' offense is going to bounce back from this. What mattered to me was the Steelers in their division. They are going to play Jacoby Brissett. They are going to play the Ravens, who beat the Jets pretty handedly, but their offense was not good in the first half. And the Jets are not the Steelers in terms of defense. Man, the Steelers can win this. Their defense is so good, they can win the division just because of their defense and maybe even special teams, despite being a little handcuffed by the Trubisky, probably eventually Kenny Pickett situation. Mm -hmm. It's... It's rare in today's NFL to be able to do that, but they are so good that they can pull it off. The Black yeah. Air Force Ones showed up in this game. Yeah, I mean, Joe Burrow, when you look at his final stat line, 338 passing yards still had two passing touchdowns. It was rough in that first half. He had five for five turnovers. He had the four interceptions. Actually, I think he had three interceptions and one lost fumble. I think he had four turnovers in the first half, and I think he had another interception in the second half. But you look at Jamar Chase, monster, 10 receptions, 129 yards, and a touchdown. And, and the dude had just so many insane catches that even felt like didn't count. And it was yeah. like the, the, like the one handed catch posted? was just yeah. unbelievable, Nuts. man. So, but the thing is that I agree with you completely. We already knew that was going to be the case. Now, is it a little bit worrisome that Burrow came out of the gate and, and was just throwing practice lobs to pittsburgh steelers defenders yeah that was worrisome but at the end of the day they called they clawed themselves back they scored that last touchdown and honestly the bengals should have won this game by kicking that extra point at the end of regulation so this i mean they should have won the game anyways even with all those turnovers which when you think about it losing the turnover battle five nothing and still you should have won the game it just kind of encapsulates how magical joe burrow is and how you could just never count this dude out no but I'm going to side with you a little bit and talk about a different detail. You talked about Minka Fitzpatrick and how you, how huge this Pittsburgh Steelers defense is. Connor, what mattered most here is that TJ Watt left this game and there is it, the, the camera was right on TJ Watt as he was walking off the field. And you can see him saying to the trainer that it's his pec. And it, it, it looks a lot like he says, I tore my pec. And he, and he is pissed. He is sad. His arm is not moving. No, and they immediately they immediately just took him to the tunnel because this guy is the reigning defensive player of the year, okay? Had an elite PFF overall grade before he left this game. Had six tackles, three tackles for loss, a sack, two passes broken up. Like, he was an absolute monster. He was the TJ Watt who was picking up right where he left off last year when he was crowned the best defensive player in the league. And if the Steelers don't have him, they them leaning on their defense gets a lot more difficult. Because Trubisky was I mean, he's a not mega star. Good. Trubisky was not good today. No, Trubisky's no, final he didn't stat do line, 21, 
uh, completions on 38 attempts, 194 passing yards, just one touchdown, zero interceptions. But his average depth of target was like barely over five. He just wasn't good. He just wasn't pushing the ball the way that they needed to. Najee Harris left the game as well, but it looks like he's going to be okay. What mattered most from this game to me is TJ Watt. If TJ Watt is out, Steelers are in trouble. Steelers are in big trouble. All right, yeah, let's go. It's, let's, it's huge. Let's go to let's go to Washington, Jacksonville. We teased that one a little bit. Commanders end up winning this game in Washington, twenty-eight to twenty-two. So a little bit of fight there from the Jacksonville Jaguars. But what was the biggest takeaway here for you, Connor? Commanders fans, buckle your seatbelts, get ready for takeoff. You are on the Carson Wentz experience, and you are on it the entire season, baby. Terrible place. I, Terrible place. I, I mean, wild. Trevor, wild. Super cool that Jahan Dotson had a couple big touchdowns in this game. Yep. The commanders have talent on this roster. And Wentz went full Wentz. He made some big plays. He also had the one throw down the field that was intercepted that he looked like he just chucked it up and, and literally said a prayer. The screen, he missed Trayvon Walker. I, I just he he just doesn't see things at times. And that's wait, wait, never... wait, wait, wait. Wait, you talk about the Trayvon Walker pick? Yes. Because that was alien like. I almost don't even want to put that on Carson Wentz. A six foot five, 285 pound man should not yes. be going full extension for a pick the way that Trayvon did. He was, uh, it was nuts a great today. play. Great play by Trayvon Walker. But I just, before we started, I, I watched the coach's tape of it and it does not do Wentz much justice. And I know it's tough. You're behind, you know, big offensive line, but he's just, he, I, I mean, yeah, it's a sick play by Walker. I'm literally playing it back again for like the eighth time to make sure I didn't miss something here. But even like he just I don't know, man. He just has this nonchalant way on his interceptions with Wentz that you're just like, he's a wild man. He, and you no, know what? He he totally it is. made some big plays for them today and they're going to live and die by that. Not that I'm breaking any news here. I guess my mini one is, I, I was a little disappointed. I guess I had bigger expectations for Trevor Lawrence. It's only week one. It's going to take time to get better under the staff. But I thought he was a little hot and cold overall, but the Wentz roller coaster might be in what is it like roller coaster tycoon status where like it's going <laughs> to be wilder than ever because this offense will allow him to operate that way. You know, I'm gonna I'll, I'll push back on you a little bit and just say that I I liked what I saw from Trevor Lawrence today. You know, he was definitely hot and cold. You were you were right about it. Was it was not bad. Let me be but fair. There were a couple of throws that were just mint and it just yep. reminded you of how good this player is and i'm excited the thing that mattered the most to me is that trevor lawrence is not ruined because look for washington they won the game they were supposed to win the game carson wentz was up and down he's always going to be up and down this washington result game didn't really teach me anything about the commanders i was at least reassured that Trevor Lawrence was not ruined by Urban Meyer last year. That's There's good point. building block pieces here. And I think that that's what's most important to me. I've got the initial PFF grade here and 62.4 passing grade. That's not very good, right? You, know, you had one big time throw, one turnover worthy play. Adjusted completion percentage, 74.3. Yeah, I was going to say, bad. it was pretty high. It's not bad, not bad. Uh, NFL passer rating was only 75. So you want to see... A little bit better by that but the average depth the target for lawrence was 10.3 you know he, he really liked to push the ball down the field he still had that confidence um and, and let's be honest here travis Etienne dropped two touchdowns separately yeah. on two separate drives jags could have won this game the jags could have their won line their line was pretty bad game. too to be fair to lawrence again their line was he was running for his life a lot so i was very impressed with lawrence shout out christian kirk First game, you know, we were all clowning the Jaguars for giving them that much money on free agency. He had 100 yards. Uh, he had the long pass of uh, 49 yards, that absolute beauty that I was talking about from Trevor Lawrence. But, man, Travis Etienne catches those two passes, catches those two touchdowns. We're probably talking about a Jags win. So my biggest takeaway is, uh, is Trevor Lawrence. You got another one before we move on? No, that summed it up pretty well. That's a game that I'll be looking forward to going because there was – 9,000 things going on in the moment of that game that when I can get through all the coaches tape, I want to see what the commander's defense did because it felt like they were just causing hell for the Jaguars front. It's a good group and it's a good, but again, like I, I, I felt like it was going to be a good group. I always felt like yes, it was going to be the strength of teams. Full of first round picks. Yeah, across better, the board. It, better, it better be good. You're right. Dolphins, Patriots, Dolphins at home in Miami, Ooh. 20 to seven. 
I got to dive into a lot of this one. Absolutely took it to him. All right, take it away. What was the biggest takeaway then from this game for you? What mattered most, actually? I got to say I gotta say the segment title. What mattered most here from this game? What mattered most to me is that what we feared all summer, I think, is coming true. Is say that it. Say it. New England's offense, from a personnel standpoint, but more importantly, a coaching standpoint, is not good enough around Mac Jones. And it's... It's really bad for the second year of his career, a pivotal uh, developmental year where so Matt Patricia called plays, Trevor. He had he called a run play on a second and 17. Oh, you love it. I mean, I mean, Jesus. You, 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 just, you just love to see it. He called a run play on a third and three uh, towards the end of the game. And that, yeah, they called that because they went for it on fourth down, but they didn't get it on fourth down. The lack of creativity was jaw-dropping. And Evan Lazar, who we've had on this podcast, who writes for Patriots.com, mm-hmm. you know, really, really, you know, summed it up well. He said the Pats used two personnel groupings the entire game. They didn't use much play action. They didn't use much RPOs and very, very little motion. This era of football, if if you are that static, two personnel groupings and none of the three play action RPO motion and you're not that good like you can be a two personnel team if you're like yeah guess what like we're full of all-stars like we're we're gonna go out there and we're not doing anything fancy we're just better than you and we win our one-on-ones and this is what we do and you could try to stop it that is not this version of the new england patriots offense and i don't think it's fair to mac jones honestly i think you need to do more to help him and guess what i'll say it right now this is maybe my week one overreaction I don't think Matt Patricia's the guy. I don't think Joe Judge is the guy. I'm floored at how Bill Belichick has handled this situation. And yeah, Miami's got a decent defense. You went down to a place that play. It's hot as hell. It sucks. Right. But you did nothing. You looked awful. And I think it's going to be a long year for that offense if they don't. I mean, it's too late to change things up. This is what they've decided to do. And I just don't think their offense is going to be very good. I really like what I saw from Miami's defense. Miami's defense. They're a good group. Definitely taking that next but step. Se- forward. Trevor, seven points. No, oh, it was great. And the Javon Holland interception was awesome. Well, he's he's a freaking ball player. He, Holland. He, he's Holland's a, a stud. He's a monster. I uh, so I I think that my biggest takeaway was was with the Dolphins. But oh, man, I hate doing this. Oh no, I hate being I hate being that guy. I know where you're going. I'm worried about Tua, man. I still am. The big the biggest takeaway for me was uh, the biggest takeaway for me was that. Tua to me is who we think he is. He and is. look, I think that you can point out the raw stats. If you look at his stats from this game, 23, 23 for 33. Okay, not bad. 270 yards. Okay, not bad. One touchdown, no interceptions. Average um, average yards per attempt was, was 8.2 yards. Okay, like all those things are good. Quarterback rating, 104.4. QBR was 78.2. That's out of 100. So, like, you can look at some of those things and be like, okay, like, yeah, like, two had a great game. Like, look at the stats. They won the game. They were in control. 52.8 passer grade, initial passer grade from PFF. And he earned it. And there were some stinkers, man. Bro, there the were fourth quarter should have been throws. picked. Did you see that? Yes. It's on the turnover-worthy plays where he just rolls out and he's just like, sweet. Three New England defenders or two New England. Let me just lob one up, and they cross into each other and don't catch it. We got two turnover worthy plays. Yeah, that was the second throws. One. You had the the jump ball to Tyreek Hill near the sideline that should have been picked off. Tyreek Hill absolutely saved. You had the one pass where I can't remember if it was an RPO or if it was a play action, but he like steps into it to cannon it to a wide open Jalen Waddle, and it bounces like fifteen yards uh. in front of Waddle. Like, I just. I don't want to be too hard on Tua, but like, ain't no other good QB out there doing this. It's just, it, it's 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 going to come back to bite him, man. That was my what matters most is that Tua got this win. If he plays like this again against good teams, it's going to come back to bite him because his Patriots team clearly is not a good team. Browns, Panthers, move on here. Browns get the win in the end, twenty six to twenty four. A game that was very close. The spread was very close on it. it was bouncing all around. Ended up being the Panthers being favored by I think a, maybe a point, half a point when it was all said and done. But the Browns come away victorious. What mattered most here in this game? What mattered most to me is that the Browns 
are have shown their cards of who they're going to be with Jacoby Brissett. Not that there's anything wrong with that, and I don't think they're hiding anything. But they are going to turn around and hand the ball to Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt about 35 times a game. And they are completely okay with that because they trust in their offensive line. They don't trust in Brissett to take over the game. Amari Cooper had three catches for 17 yards. Amari Cooper's not making $20 million to have three catches for 17 yards. But Deshaun Watson's not playing for most of this year, so that's the way it is. What matters most to me, though, is just that the Browns are going to smash mouth, run, punch you in the face until you could stop it. The Panthers could not stop it. We'll see what the Jets could do next week. But the Browns are going to, this is who they're going to be. And now it's a matter of can they survive their, what, first 11 games like this? Panthers got to give the ball to Christian McCaffrey. They survived man. the first one. What are, what are we doing out here? Christian McCaffrey had 10 carries for 33 yards, but it felt like it was the strangest 10 carries that didn't come at the points where it needed to throughout the game. Well, four receptions for 24 yards. That's I guess the maybe, bigger one. He had I guess four maybe, targets. I guess maybe they were like keying in on him, maybe. But like, br- brother, we got to get this guy the find ball. Find a way. We got to. We've got to find a way to get this guy the ball. And it felt like. It felt like Ben McAdoo, the offensive coordinator in Carolina, was just trying to make this the Baker revenge game early on. He was just trying to obviously win it through Baker. And for Baker, you got like, you got to, you got to, bad move. You, you've just got to establish your identity a lot more through Christian McCaffrey. That to me is something that mattered most because if Carolina is constantly leaning on Mayfield, I just don't think it's going to go the way that they want to. I guess if you're leaning too much on McCaffrey, it's not going to either. I don't have a lot of faith in the Carolina Panthers. So, um yeah i I was just the the mccaffrey thing totally stood out to me that was to me my biggest my biggest standout from this game is it time to close out the one o'clocks with the uh the the shootout the The wild fest the colts texans the tie what is your takeaway from the tie Colts are not as good as we thought they were. Yeah, I, I oh, I'm glad you opened up with it because you know because this game. So this game ends twenty to twenty. Both these teams get a tie, and you know what? I, I don't want to sound like I'm too harsh on the Houston Texans. Davis Mills played well, two hundred forty yards, two touchdowns, zero interceptions. Um, oh, I, I was hoping Damian Pierce would play a little bit better. OJ Howard somehow revitalizing his career as if like it, having Tom, as, as if having Tom Brady and Josh Allen throwing you the ball was the problem. He goes to Davis Mills, and now all of a sudden he's a touchdown machine, he's back. which I thought was absolutely hilarious you know i think that i thought the defense played well for the houston texans but you figured that they would because levy smith's a defensive guy what worried me the most is on the other side of the ball was on the other side of the field that other team was matt ryan matt ryan threw for over 350 yards 352 but it was not solid jonathan taylor absolute monster yet again it just feels like this guy's a guaranteed 100 yards every time he steps onto the field 31 carries 161 yards and a touchdown Michael Pittman Jr. also had a really great game. Nine catches, 121 yards, and a touchdown there. But this Colts team just did not look nearly as sharp as they needed yeah, to be. Yeah, I think so. You've got – I get it. It's a divisional game. You're playing on the road. You're opening things up on the road. you got to be better. You're better than this football team. The Colts should be are, – are more talented. They are more experienced. They are a better football team than the Houston Texans. And for them to come away uh, with – Oh shoot! What is overtime? Is it fifteen minutes or is it an extra ten? No, no. I think ooh, is an extra. How do we not know that? It's weird. It's one of those weird things you never actually. Look Maybe because I've never cared. No, because uh, you know like the game's gonna end. Whatever it is, this sixty plus minutes, you can't outscore this Texans team. That's bad. It was just a bad start out of the gate. Uh, it's not all is lost in Indianapolis. Thankfully, the Tennessee Titans lost as well. We'll get to that in a second. But I just was not. What mattered the most to me was that. I was not impressed with the Indianapolis Colts on the offensive side of the football. There are stats that you could look at and you could point to and be like, look how great they were at the end of the game. Should have been a lot better out of the gate. Should have been a lot better in those mid quarters. So I just not a, not a fan of the Indianapolis Colts this week. What mattered to me the most of the Colts is two things. One, the bit seven penalties Two, the slow star. As you said, this is really just piggyback, piggybacking off of your point. I mean, Trevor, they had three points in the first three quarters. and Embarrassing. I, this is a team that you and I, they got away here. They got away with a tie. They didn't lose the game. This is a team that you and I expect to be playing in playoff games. And when you run into the Buffalo Bills, the Kansas City Chiefs, eventually the Bengals, teams like that, you can't start slow offensively. 
And hopefully this was just kind of an extension of their preseason in that mold. Giants Titans. I teased it there. Titans end up coming up the L. <laughs> I don't know how. I don't just the fact that the Giants won this game is mind, hilarious. Just mind numbing to me. The Titans at one point were up 13 nothing, I think, and then the Giants got on the scoreboard. Where's the play-by-play recap? Where is it? Were they up 13-0 or did they get up 16? No, no, no. They were up 13-0. Then it ends up being 13-13. Tennessee yep. takes the lead 20 to 13. <laughs> then the Giants score at the very end. There's there's no way the Giants should should have won this game, man. Absolute meltdown by the Tennessee Titans. This is a team that, if you ask me, does not have the horses to win the games that they need to win. Right When you look at these best teams in the NFL, I get it. Titans won the number one overall seed last year. But we've all tried to tell you that that was fool's gold. That was not going to happen again. This is not a team, especially with no A.J. Brown, that has the makeup to get a big lead on you, keep that lead, and when the other team starts to punch back, they can throw a haymaker. I don't think the Tennessee Titans have that kind of makeup. I just don't. And I know they had a chance to win it there at the end. I know they were right there at the end. But it's the same argument with the Indianapolis Colts and the, and the Houston Texans. The Titans should be better than the Giants. Period. End of story. They should have beaten this team. They were up 13-0 on this team. They let them all the way back in it. They let them take the lead, and then they missed a field goal at the end. It's just It was bad football all around. They couldn't seal the deal. And what matters most to me is that it feels like, I don't want to say I'm vindicated like I'm happy about it, but it feels like we validated that the Titans are just yep. going to be this massive roller coaster of a team. And they were the same last year and just happened to come out on top of a lot of these really close games, especially against some really good teams. I don't see that happening again this year. So that's why I ultimately had the Titans missing out on the playoffs in my predictions. And I'm no different today. I think that's what mattered most is that this team showed us the makeup of kind of what they are. I'll take two for the Giants for what mattered most to me. Because there we you, go. You summed up the Titans really, really well. And that's an opinion we're unified on. One, Brian Dable has a set of balls. I mean, going for the win there was awesome. Going for the two. Because Brian Dable is no moron. Brian Dable looked at this and goes, we're not the better roster. I'm up against a guy that wins coach of the year. This is my chance. I'm going to control my destiny. Yep. I have the perfect play call. And that leads to my second point. Saquon Barkley is back, and boy, did he look awesome. Not just on the two-point conversion where he broke the tackle and got in on that little pitch pass. He was great all game. He is probably going to be a free agent after the end of this year unless the Giants franchise tag him, and it feels like they are just going to run him into the ground in a sense, and he seems okay with that because he's happy to be healthy and back on the field. Daniel Jones just with that mind-boggling, awful interception that felt like that was it for them. But they found a way to win because Brian Dable and Saquon Barkley were just really, really impressive in this one. Minnesota Vikings, 23. Green Bay Packers, 7. Look, it, I, I, if you want to say that Vikings defended home turf, we've got a little revenge on Aaron Rodgers, all right, I hear you. And I'll tip the cap to the Minnesota Vikings. For it to look like that, though. It looked bad. For it to look like that? Connor, what mattered most in this game? That Green Bay, the state of their offensive line, without Elton Jenkins, Bakhtiari, oh, dude. they can't block anyone. And Aaron Rodgers is a smart guy. He should have known that. And he held the ball, Trevor, for an eternity. An eternity back Yeah, there. it felt like, weird. He, he would make someone even away. miss... And he'd still just hold on to the ball. And I don't know if that's an indictment, because once again, Trevor and I are recording this Sunday night. We will get us through much coaches film as we can this week. Are Sammy Watkins and Christian Watson, are all these guys like not open? Or is, is Rodgers looking for the perfect play? We know he likes to do that sometimes. My thing is, Trevor, the state of their offensive line with the injuries, He, he if he's going to do that, He's gonna get a hit. He's gonna get hit 150 times this year. It, it was and credit to Minnesota, they took care of business. But I, th this to me was more about Green Bay having uh, a a pretty big problem on their hands in in that combination. Drops were a big issue on Green Bay's offensive side of things as well. Christian Watson had a massive drop. That, that was been a, a game changing drop. It felt AJ like. Dillon also had a drop, and and I just wonder if there's there's that 
not level of trust between Rodgers and uh, and the rest of his receivers are there. So, you know, that might take some time to get worked out, and so might the other side of the ball. That's what matters most to me. The reason why I had the Green Bay Packers winning uh, 13 games again this year is actually because of their defense. I thought that this was going to be the most talented and best defense that the Packers we're going to have over the last couple of years. And it still might be, I still think that they have those guys on the team, but Joe Barry is the new defensive coordinator in green Bay and uh, brother, he couldn't have looked more lost. Yeah. I mean, Justin Jefferson is an extremely talented football player. Okay. You're never going to hear me There's say there's no oh, answer. Nine receptions, 184 yards and two touchdowns. But what mattered the most to me, Connor, is that on the biggest plays for Justin Jefferson on the day, He's wide open. He's not making it. He's not like there's no one on the screen. He, he's not like even doing anything to separate. There's nobody there. Schematically, he's got the safeties pointing at each other. No, I thought you had him. No, I thought you had him. The, the, there's one play where Jair Alexander just like rolled his eyes and the camera caught it. And he's like, I like, and, and that was a play where Jair wasn't manned up against him man to man. It was, it was a zone play where Jair was, he thought that he was basically leaving jefferson to go across where he was for a safety to pick him up and jair takes another guy who's going deeper in his zone and it just leaves justin jefferson wide open not a guy within 10 yards of him how does that happen the, yeah. the guys in the broadcast said that so many times They're like how is justin jefferson this open shit at one point there was a play where preston smith was lined up in the slot against justin jefferson guess what happened he caught the ball it was a first down i think like this stuff can't happen. Defensive side of the football, it's a lot of chemistry. It's a lot of reps. It's a lot of learning about things and getting better as the season goes on. So I don't want to be catastrophically hard on the Packers here. But what mattered most is they better figure it the hell out because whatever Joe Barry trotted out there against the Vikings, that ain't going to work against the Vikings, and that ain't going to work against a lot of the other good teams that they play this year because the Packers play on some primetime games. So – they got to get that part figured out because it was ugly. Even beyond the hat tip, great job, Kevin O'Connell and the Vikings. He had those guys ready, and you love to see it. Packers were abysmal on defense, and it started with their chemistry. Started and ended, unfortunately, with their chemistry. Uh, let's go to Chiefs Cardinals. Yep. Chiefs 44, Arizona Cardinals 21. But that was a, uh, let's face it, that was a mercy 21. Felt like this game probably could have and maybe should have ended 44 to 7 and everybody could have gone home early. Connor, what was your what mattered most here from this game for you? That despite everybody yelling against it, and I understand why, trust me, I the team I grew up rooting for lost their quarterback in the preseason. I get it. Despite everybody yelling that guys shouldn't play in the preseason, Andy Reid trotted Mahomes in the starting offense out there in the preseason. And this week against an Arizona team that, when it comes down to it, they were only underdogs by four and a half points. We're not in the same class as the Kansas City Chiefs. Not and that's close. because the Chiefs offense was humming like it was the second week in November. Humming. I mean, just to read off Mahomes' day, he had he completed 31 of his 42 passing attempts for 364 yards, five passing touchdowns, two big time throws, only one turnover worthy play. They only dropped one of his passes. His adjusted completion percentage was over 76 percent. His NFL passer rating was 139.3. I mean, Trevor, they just they were ready to rock, ready to roll, and yep. I think some of it quietly is a little bit of this hey all anybody talked about for the last five months is the bills and the bucks being super bowl favorites the bills and the bucks nobody cares and they're really good the bills and the bucks but there was a little edge to this chief's performance of like yeah we traded tyree kill yeah and we'll drop five touchdowns on you we could drop 10 if we want you want to stay in the night you want to hang around and play three more quarters <laughs> we'll drop 10 on you yeah they're they're a machine and they are pissed off, and it carried over from playing in the summer. Yep. Look, I, I agree with you 
One hundred percent. Charles McDonald at Four Verts on Twitter. He's had a bit over the last couple of months, basically just consistently saying that Patrick Mahomes is the most underrated he's player right. in the NFL because he is, and it's hilarious. I, I think. I mean, it's a wonderful bit. I hope he keeps it up because it is. He put everybody on notice. You talking about the preseason reps? You are totally right because I, taking it back to another game that we already talked about, Joe Burrow not playing in the preseason this year Shut to me today. is probably a catalyst for why they lost this game. Burrow came out of the gate and was truly throwing practice balls to the to to what ended up being <laughs> Steelers defenders. There was no zip. There was no needed anticipation. He was basically like, ah, yeah, throw a pick, it's practice, whatever. And it's like, oh, wait, shit, this is week one. That's making Fitzpatrick. He's going in the end zone. And Patrick Mahomes, the first team offense for the Chiefs, they don't have that because they've been already playing the games. I think that that's what matters most is that the Chiefs are still here. They're still for real. Um, and until you really knock them off their game, they are uh, they are the ones to be reckoned with, I think. And we get uh, we get the Los Angeles Chargers versus the Kansas City Chiefs this Thursday, which is going to be unbelievable. I do have a next gen stat that I want to read off. Patrick Mahomes was blitzed on over half of his dropbacks, fifty four percent, for the first time in his career. He threw a career high four touchdowns versus the blitz, tied for most in a single game in the next gen stats era since since twenty sixteen. Another what matters most for me is on the Cardinal side of things because. Blitzing Patrick Mahomes in that way was has been proven time and time again to like this is not how you beat him. This is not how you beat Patrick Mahomes. He if you blitz him, he will carve you up. He will find where your coverage is weak. He will find where you have allocated the other guys that are coming at the pocket, and he will throw to that area. He will attack that area. He trusts his receivers. He's too good on the run and outside of structure. And yet the Cardinals thought that that was going to be the right game plan. I think the Cardinals are in trouble, man. I well, think they I were th- one of our big regression teams. I think that we are four months away from the Cardinals completely cleaning house. Kingsbury, Kime, the coordinators, everything. K- Kime will survive for the 40th time. I don't know I'm if he's kidding. Man. I'm just kidding. I don't know There's if he no can. Way this I don't time. know if he can. This is I, this is a Arizona Cardinals team that might be destined to win five games this year. Four, nah, I don't know. Four is not very many, but. Something around that four to six range. And if that's the case, I think everybody's gone. Chiefs are still the Kings until you take it away from them. Uh, the last game that we're talking about, because we're not talking about Bucks Cowboys. We're currently recording this podcast as that game is finishing up. So we didn't get to see the end of it. Raiders Chargers. Close game at the end. Eventually the Chargers came away victorious. This one's at home. 24 to 19. What mattered most from this game, Connor? <sighs> It's it's kind of cheap, but it's just that Justin Herbert is so clearly ready to cement himself as this top five quarterback, not just statistically, but the the flow of the game. It felt like that when whenever they needed a big throw or a big play, he had it. That I mean, that's my like duh one. Mm-hmm. My other side is that man. This is the year the questions are going to be harder than ever on Derek Carr, whether he likes it or not. Sure. And the reason that is is because Derek Carr, for as good as he can be at times, now has his favorite college teammate. And they look good together, him and Devontae Adams. Don't get me wrong. He got his guy, superstar, paid like a superstar, well-earned, deserving of it. The three interceptions in this game, Trevor, and just the missed plays. And listen, Khalil Mack was licking his chops man he loves playing those Raiders but I think every year it's not that he gets a pass because Raiders fans are probably pretty tough on Derek Carr because they want to win and I don't blame them I think this will this will raise this year will raise the hardest questions because he's got to beat Herbert he's got to beat Mahomes he's got to beat Russ and as as much as I really like this Raiders team Trevor I just don't know if he can consistently do it I think there's just shortcomings it sucks for the Raiders it does. That they're in the AFC West. It, it does. Sucks. They're a good football team. Because if the Raiders were in the AFC South, they'd, Candy have, Land. they'd have the division already, yeah. already on lock. And it just sucks that they're in the place that they're in because I don't think they're a bad football team. And I don't think Derek Carr is a bad quarterback. Dude, that, not. that pass that he had to Brandon Bolden, oh my God. He's like jumping. He's going cross body. It's a floater. It's straight in the bread basket. Shoot. Hell. 
that pass that he had to Darren Waller that got them down to the end zone. And I think the Adams throw. scored. Dude, brother, that was the best throw in the game. I'm about to yep. sit here and tell you that what mattered most is Justin Herbert, and I'm still going to stick by it. But Derek Carr had the best throw in that game, and it was that throw to Darren Waller. It's unbelievable. So Carr has the talent. He's just got to put together the consistency. We've been talking about this forever. Uh, he, he just needs to do that, and I hope he does, because I hope this division's a shootout, because it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. But what matters most is Justin Herbert. Elite PFF passing grade from this game. Three big-time throws, three touchdowns, zero, zero turnover-worthy plays. The man was built in a lab. The yeah. arm doesn't make any sense. I mean, what, Justin Herbert has an arm that is comparably elite to like what we've seen from Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes and those guys. I'm not saying he can throw a football as far. You know, like that's not, that's not exactly what I'm saying. I think that Mahomes and even Allen can maybe put a little bit more velocity on it. But like you are in that realm. He is in that realm of I can make any throw on the football oh, yeah. field that's absolutely ridiculous with pace, with touch, with pinpoint accuracy. He truly has that. And I know we like to say that a lot, right? You and I are in the scouting world. We use that phrase all the time. Oh, he can make all the throws. I think sometimes we stretch that a little bit because it's like, oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, like he can get the ball there. Justin Herbert's not getting the, throws the ball have there. Changed. He is, he is absolutely putting mustard on it. So, like, yeah. That's the biggest takeaway for me is that the Chargers are for real. Justin Herbert's for real. And um, Thursday Night Football is about to be an absolute goddamn slugfest between the Chiefs and the Chargers, and I can't wait for it. I mean, we are so blessed to get that on a Thursday night. You love to see it. You really do love to see it. Uh, Before we get out of here, I got to talk to you guys about our friends, our newest partner, uh, Symbol. They are revolutionizing the world of sports betting and fan engagement by making sports fandom possible it is stock market for sports okay this is perfect for my met stock is back up by the way first place game and a half i'm i'm on fire dude i'm like I, a spongebob meme with the monocle and I, like, <laughs> I told you guys last week that i bought two teams ahead of this weekend bought shares of the philadelphia eagles bought shares of the washington commanders guess what baby oh, dude you're the spongebob meme we're up we're up that means free money to play Payouts. for this week He's free money to play for this week. Symbol was a PFS sponsor last year. Uh, now they're continuing to get in on the football action. It lets you trade pro and college teams like stocks and even earn cash dividends and payouts when your teams win. Symbol took the thrill of sports betting and combined it with the profitability of the stock market to give you a platform where fortune favors the fan. Download the Symbol app uh, for iOS by searching S-I-M-B-U-L-L in the App Store using the promo code N-F-L-S-E and you will receive a free team stock valued up to $150 when you you sign up, download the app, create a free account, enter the promo code NFLSE, and get that free stock valued up to 150 bucks. and compete against me and Connor this season. Every Thursday for the Thursday live edition of the podcast, uh, we're going to go through and we're going to talk about the teams that we bought or sold. We're going to tell you our portfolio moves that we do throughout the week. So yes, yeah, look at our I portfolios. Extra, I, got, I got a little extra cash, so now I can uh, now I can have a little bit of fun for this Thursday. Now I can uh, get get in on it. Plus week one, you know, like week one. Now I get an understanding. Now I feel the vibe of some teams. Now I can make some real cash. That's what it's all about. As we wrap the show, all I want to say is Julio Jones is back and better than ever. Did he score a touchdown? No, he's just back. Oh, dude, don't get my hopes up like that, dude. Three have, catches, sixty nine yards. I have my back to the TV, so I can't even see. What They're the handing is. him the ball. It's just. I'm loving it. He looks so good in the number six. He does it's, indeed. It's awesome. It's awesome. Byron Leftwich forever, baby. Free Ooh. the talent. Free the talent. You love to see it. Uh, let us know what you guys thought of the week one action. Obviously, so many takes, some overreactions. This team's yeah, it's the goal. <laughs> going to the Super Bowl. Let us know. Uh, hit us up on Twitter at Tam at Connor J. Rogers. And then we also have the uh, podcast handle at PFF underscore NFLSE. Is that what it is? Or is it NFLSE underscore PFF? One of those two? If you type in at, at PFF NFLSE. underscore NFLSE. There we go. Okay. Thank you for thank you for being a professional co-host and actually knowing it uh, for my dumb ass to sound. Like a no, I looked it up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we have, as you guys know, we're back to three episodes a week, which means we are going to be back tomorrow to talk about some stock up. Mm-hmm. knockdown players had a world of college football that we also watched on saturday a lot of prospects to continue to evaluate some movement on our big board already here in this early part of the season so we're going to be telling you some uh some guys that were stock up stock down on that list for whatever rankings that we're going for and then of course thursday get you guys is ask me anything questions ready because we will be back 
Thursday night before Thursday night football. It's going to be a good one. I want you all to hang out with us before we get Mahomes and Herbert. Oh, so dude, this be, is the one. Going to be some hype in the show. Going to be some hype in the chat. I uh, can't wait for it. I'm Trevor Sycamore. That is Connor Rogers. Thank you guys so much for listening to the NFL Stock Exchange podcast. We'll see you guys tomorrow.